In this video, we'll go over the derivation for the efficiency of a Carnot cycle. So in the last video, I had left off with an expression for the efficiency of a cycle. And we had said that the efficiency of a cycle is net work done by gas in the cycle over the heat absorbed by gas. So it's kind of like we put some heat into our system and we've been calling this Q in from um, and this Q in is being applied from state one to state two. And how much net work do we get out of this heat? And that's what we've defined as the efficiency of our cycle. And so then putting in values, the net work is a total of the work done from 1 to 2 plus the work from 2 to 3 plus the work from 3 to 4 plus the work from 4 to 1 all over our Q in. Now if you remember, the work from 1 to 2 and from the work from 2 to 3 will be positive because the gas is doing work. The work from the work three to four and work from four to one are negative because work is being done on gas. So I'm going to go through kind of steps, the expressions for each of these, and we're going to be simplifying this whole thing down to one minus T C, um, T cold, or T hot. Okay. Another thing to note, so in this derivation, one of the assumptions I'm going to make is that we are working with an ideal gas. That means is that it follows the rule that pressure of a gas is equal to nRT, T temperature of the gas, over volume. Where R here is just some universal gas constant and n is the number of particles in a gas. Okay, so the reason why that's important is for, um, so as we're figuring out the work from 1 to 2, one thing to note is that from 1 to 2 is an isothermal process and because our gas is ideal, it is not changing phases from 1 to 2. And so we can make this, um, we know that the change in internal energy, because the temp because it is an isothermal process, from 1 to 2 is equal to 0. And going back to your thermodynamics, the change in internal energy is equal to Q in minus work. Now in this, from one to two, our change in internal energy is zero. And so here, the work done from one to two is gonna be equal to our Q in. So um, this will come useful later in the derivation. Okay, so now another way we define work is the integral from the initial state to the final state of our pressure as a function of volume, dV. And so now I'm gonna substitute this expression for pressure for an ideal gas into here. So we have from one to two, I'm gonna su substitute this in to so nR, now from one to two, remember the temperature of our gas, it's isothermal, so the temperature of our gas is gonna stay at this value TH. This is over volume dV. So if you work out the math and um, take the integral of one over V, um, this will simplify to N R T H L N of V2 over one. Okay, so that is the work from one to two. Now I'm gonna jump to, um, because the work from three to four is similar, uh, 
let's go ahead and do that. So similarly, from three to four, this is also an isothermal process. And so this also occurs at a constant temperature. So we can do something very similar to the way that we found an expression from the work from one to two. So this will be equal to the integral from three to four PV dV. Now in this case, our temperature from three to four is now at TC, cold temperature. And sorry, this should be a three, this should be a four. And now this simplifies to N R T C L N of V four over V V one. Okay, so now we have expressions for the work from one to two and the work from three to four. Now, for the work from two to three and the work from four to one. Both of these processes are adiabatic. Remember, there's no heat exchange happening from the process from 2 to 3 and 4 to 1. And there are also re reversible isentropic processes and for an ideal gas. So these two will cancel out with each other. So we're left with the work from 1 to 2 plus the work from 3 to 4 all over Q in. Okay, so we can uh, move over here. So I have my efficiency now. Is a work from one to two, plus the work from three to four over Q in. Now I'm going to split this up. The reason I'm going to do this, because as I established earlier, I know that the work from 1 to 2 is equal to Q in. So this is going to simplify to 1. So I'm going to have 1. And now the expression from, work from 3 to 4, as we found earlier, was NRTC ln of V4 over V3. And this is going to be over our Q in, which is equal to the work from 1 to 2. And we had found this to be N R T H L N of V2 over V1. Now this is starting to look a little bit like our final expression. So now here we have 1 plus TC over TH um, LN of V4 over V3 and V2 over V1. Now, how are we going to simplify this? So if you, there's one other um, expression that we're going to use to figure out what this boils down to. So if you remember back in thermodynamics for an adiabatic process we know that P V to the gamma is constant throughout an adiabatic process. So now we know that the processes from three, sorry, from two to three and from four to one are adiabatic. So I know that the pressure two and the volume at two, gamma, is gonna be equal to the pressure at state three, and volume at state three, to the gamma. Same thing, I can apply it here. 
one more to the gamma is equal to the pressure at state one and the volume at state one to the gamma. So now I'm going to plug in the ideal gas law into my pressures. So I'm going to start a new um, layer here real quick. <clears throat> okay, so adiabatic process. We have PV to gamma is constant. And I know that the processes from 2 to 3, 4 to 1 are adiabatic. So I can apply this rule. And so I have P to V to gamma is equal to P three V three gamma. Now I'm going to substitute here the pressure. Um, sorry, the temperature at this state is T H over volume. We have V two gamma is equal to N R temperature at state 3 is TC over V3 V3 gamma. So basically I can cancel out the NRs from both sides and I have TH over TC is equal to um, V3 over V2 gamma minus 1. Similarly, we've got P4, V4 gamma is equal to P1, V1 gamma. Temperature at state 4 is Tc. And the temperature at state one is TH. V1 to gamma. So this simple same thing, we cancel out NR. And so here I have TC V4 V4. Oh, I'm sorry. TH over TC is going to equal to V4 over V1 gamma minus 1. So from doing that, as you can see, V3 over V1 is equal to, um, basically TH over TC equals this expression and this expression. So I can have this expression equal to this expression. If I get rid of the exponents on both sides, I have V3 over V2 um, is equal to V4 over V1. So in my expression from the last slide, I had 1 plus Tc over Th ln of V4 over V3 and V2 over V1. So from looking at this, if I um, switch this up, I'm going to multiply by V2 and V1. I'm um, sorry, I'm going to divide by V3 and bring V1 over to this side. So this is also the same thing as V1 over V2 is equal to V4 over V3. So basically this expression right here is equal to negative one from this relationship that we derived from this adiabatic law. And so we are left with that the final um, that the efficiency is equal to one minus 
TC over TH. So again, many times you will not have to go through this derivation, but the key part is to understand that we've defined efficiency as a network done by gas over the heat in and understanding the original expression for efficiency and that this is the sum of all the work in each process over the initial heat that was input from one to two and that came out to equal this through some of the equations and assumptions that I've shown here. So I hope that gives you a better understanding of how um, this expression came to be. Thanks for watching. Bye.